Boom shakalaka chura! Welcome back to the Millennial Classics, y'all. On this show, we talk about the best and most memorable movies, music, and culture-changing events from our generation. We've got a big movie today, and with this big movie, we have a special guest welcoming Hugo from the Life Almost Without Us reaction channel on YouTube. Hugo, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, man. I was checking out your channel for like the last couple of weeks, ever since you've messaged me. And I, you're a busy guy, man. You got a lot of different <laughs> content. All over different social media, too. It's crazy. I'm always like, this guy does it all. You're just interviewing people in the parks and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Like, how do you, I don't have the confidence to just walk up to someone and be like, hey, you got a second? And then record, stick a mic in someone's face. I don't know how you do it. It takes a lot, but we got a team here. It's not just me. Um, (laughs) But Burry, speaking of the team, Burry, how you doing? How, how, How are you? How's life? I'm doing good. Yo, I'm actually mad hyped to do this movie. This has kind of been a rough patch in the MCU, especially if you've been liking the MCU. Some of these last couple movies have been uh, tough watches. Don't do it! This was fun! No! <laughs> so going back to the hits, almost, I think almost all my favorite MCU movies, at least my top five, are start around this era and go all the way until... Infinity War Endgame. It's so crazy that this is kind of like a throwback. This movie is almost 10 years old. It's insane. And different. but this is this is like peak MCU when and when he, it could still surprise us. So I'm happy to do this movie. Mumbaro, you're on a goddamn roll. You you're excited for this movie. Tell the folks what movie are we doing and why is it a millennial classic? We are doing Guardians of the Galaxy, baby. Woo! Hail, hail. The man? So Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is going to come out in Disney Plus maybe next week. This is where this is July 2023. So it just is, has come out. And this movie is one of the few movies in the MCU that kind of has its own vibe. It kind of has its own separate thing that you can see is like, all right, this is this is Guardians. When the Guardians show up in the Avengers, they they have their own vibe. They bring in James Gunn to write their own stuff because they're the, the characters and the interplay are a little bit different. These guys are unique in that way and i just these these are just good vibes i love these movies they don't get too serious they still aren't super super light so let's do it why why'd you pick it why'd i pick it so first of all i I like the mashing up you know like uh the the the, even in the movie they talk about a bunch of losers i'm not talking about us but i'm just saying i like the the team up movies from random folks right and i was thinking of a good team up movie to have a feature guest on and this is definitely one of them and when i was the making the decision for the movie to do that was the main point of mine but then going back to rewatch it the feels oh my god this movie it's a it's a great goddamn movie but let me not suck up all the air here hugo i know i told the folks where you coming from but just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you coming from but then also what does this movie mean to you okay well I, my name is hugo i started a reaction channel about a year ago I don't really watch too much TV per se. And this was like a way for me to like start watching like anime. And somehow I've made myself watch other things like The Last of Us. Like we just watched Guardians of the Galaxy 3. No, it's been fun. But the first time I ever watched Guardians of the Galaxy, I didn't know what it was in any sense. I've always been kind of a DC guy. So at the time, like I was really into like anything Christopher Nolan. So I was like real serious and probably 2014 personally, I was a little depressed. So when Guardians of the Galaxy came out, I was like, it was like the first time I was like, I'm enjoying the movie. It feels kind of intense and it's still like wholesome and lighthearted. Like the guy, I don't want to like jump ahead, but I mean, he kind of like wins the fight dancing Quill, (laughs) you know, like that's how he, and I was like, oh, okay, I enjoy it. I love that. I love that. Right. Like, it's like, yeah, you're a superhero. You don't have to fucking blast the guy. He ends up yeah. blasting the guy to smithereens. Yeah, yeah. But all superheroes don't have to be a, a Dark Knight serious superhero, right. even though we all love ourselves some Dark Knight. Before you guys did the rewatch, before you guys did the rewatch, and we can start with you, Hugo. What was the thing that you remembered most about the movie before rewatching it for the podcast? I remember. OK, it's it's just silly. Like, that's it. 
And yes. it didn't even, I didn't even remember anything outside of, okay, it's just silly goofiness. I actually thought it was kind of like a B movie. Like I, Marvel, it, it, they're fine. They, I love them. The movies lately aren't the best. That not that's like- putting it, That's putting it pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love almost everything. They have some flubs. Um, prior to Endgame, beautiful. And then Endgame was like top tier. And then after that, there's kind of been some decent, like Shang-Chi was gnarly, but that's kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the question. I just rambled. I'm sorry. No, no you, you got <laughs> it. You, you said that it was pretty silly. Uh, Mumbari, uh, how about you? Before the rewatch, what was the thing that rem- you remembered most about this movie? I remember initial, my initial reaction to this movie. And that was, I, I didn't quite know who these guys were. <laughs> like my, so, my brother knows all the comics, so he was like, "No, Guardians are sick. Guardians are sick." But I'm out here being like, "All right, yo, I know Captain America, I know Iron Man, like I know the big guys. You, I even know <laughs> Thor, but I never heard of these uh, uh, like Guardians of the Galaxy guys. There's like a raccoon hanging with them, <laughs> and you look at like a picture of the comics, and you're like, this looks so ridiculous. Yeah. So this is probably the movie. I'm bringing all that up because this is probably a movie where I went in with the lowest expectations because Marvel was still pretty new at this point. Yes. Right. And, and there weren't always striking hits at this point. Captain America, the first Avengers, solid movie. Not exactly a barn burner. Thor, <laughs> the dark world. Oh, it's probably the worst one out of all of these so far. And that came out just before this, the year before this. So it's like the movies are hit and miss, and then you have this raccoon movie coming out, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> and a the moving the, tree. The, 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 the guy who's leading it is from Parks and Rec. Let's say I typed your symptoms into the thing up here, and it says you could have network connectivity problems. And then you're like, all right, this movie's gonna bomb. And then you watch it, and you're literally just like, holy, holy shit. shit. Exactly. This movie's way, way, way better. And that didn't really happen. The only other time I could see that happening. Well, it doesn't really happen now because now they have so much hype behind them. Like even Black Panther comes out a couple of years later. And even though it's like a brand new thing, it's so anticipated at that point, And Marvel has so much juice that it's like, you, yeah. it, it's, it's better than what you expect, but it's still what you expect. Yeah, it's within range. It's within range. Yeah. For me, uh, 100% it was the soundtrack. All I could remember about this movie was the banger of a soundtrack. And we'll get to that as we go through the movie. But everything that you said is 100%, 100% on point. point. And like when we get to the cast, I just want to say kudos to the cast for coming together for a bunch of fucking superheroes nobody knew. Like nobody knew these folks, at least the Guardians of the Galaxy, no one that's not deep into the comics. Let's jump into the Millennial Classics here. But before we get into Guardians of the Galaxy, join me in the Millennial Time Machine. Technically, this movie came out August 1st of 2014, but they did have this big screening late July. But I'm going to use August because that's when the people got to see it. So going down the list of what happened during 2014, so you can remember how you were or what was going on at the time. 2014 MTV Video Music Awards were held at the Forum in Englewood, California, and Beyonce's Drunken Love won Best Video. Oh, a little bit of sad news here. This was Robin Williams commit suicide uh, at the age of 63. I did have to put that in there because we are a movie pod here. Smile, my boy. It's sunrise. And then the television series here, uh, Orange is the New Black, premiered on Netflix. The first episode of BoJack Horseman. Mumbury speaking to you specifically. Your brother is obsessed with the show. And I tried like multiple times. I've tried it so many times. I can't. It's just, I can't. I can't. It's not, it's not for me. Like, it's just not for me. On the billboards. Happy, the song by Pharrell Williams was number one on uh, on Billboard's Hot 100. That means Despicable Me came out that year. (laughs) (laughs) You better believe it, did. You Bad better believe <laughs> the video game Destiny was released in the United States and made $500 million in the first week. That's insanity. I just don't even understand video game numbers, to be honest. And sticking with video games, <laughs> Roblox, which is now is like a multi-billion trillion dollar <laughs> video game. Roblox came out that year. And then the trend, the Ice Bucket Challenge went viral on social media. <laughs> Mumbury, I know we do this often, and then sometimes we don't do it. Do you want to shoot your shot here with the top 10 movies of 2014 domestic? Uh, So 2014, was that the first year that uh, 
no, that was 2015, I think. The Star Wars movie came came back, but yeah. um, no, it's not Star Wars. Yep, it's not part of. But the I list. think Captain America, the last one, was there. Winter Soldier. Yep, came out. Despicable Me. That we already talked about that one. <laughs> there was a Transformers movie in 2014. And, uh, yes, and then 2014. Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, the last Hunger Games movie. Nope. It was uh, the, oh, wait, it's yes. It's the first part of the last one. So I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Let me give you the top five over here. Number one is this movie. Yours truly Guardians of the Galaxy was number one that year. Oh, yeah. The Hunger Games part one was number two. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Number three, the Lego movie was number four. And then Transformers Age of Extinction. Mumbury, you did fucking fantastic on that list. There's sometimes it's like you get half, sometimes you get none. But this time, you basically hey. got all of it. Basically got all you of it. You can usually just throw out some franchises out there. And, <laughs> at uh, this point. Transformers, and- a Jurassic yes. World. Let me see what I got. Um, this beat the Winter Soldier? Which yes. is wow. a shame because the Winter Soldier the Winter is a, Soldier a better is movie. Masterpiece. Yeah, that's like, a that's my favorite Marvel movie. Yeah, it's so good. Even like me enjoying it so much on the rewatch, it is insane that it was but I can see that because this no, is no, a funnier no. movie and it's like I think kids oh, can watch true. this. Yeah. But also, family. also, also, I don't know like totals, but at the end of the year, this probably did better because it came out in July and people had time with it. Didn't Winter Soldier come out in winter? April. So it only had like a, a like a month. April. Oh, oh well, that is shitty. Anyways, Mumbury, <laughs> the makings and ratings. <laughs> Uh, it was directed by James Gunn. We'll, we'll we'll talk about him later. Box office, 773 worldwide. Rotten Tomatoes, 92%. So it, this is up there, upper echelon of uh, MCU. Budget, $232 million, which is uh, it's not too bad compared to the movies they're making now. IMDb is 8.5, eight, 8 out of 10. Two nominations for the Academy Awards. I'll just briefly go through the cast, but that honest, this cast might be the most impressive part of this movie. A hundred percent. The thing people for, keep forgetting is this is the first movie. It's not like this is like Endgame where it's like we can get, we can throw 50 people on here. This is the first movie and the character actors in this are still throwing fire. So, you know, you have Chris Pratt, Vin Diesel, Zoe Zaldana, Bradley Cooper, Dave Bautista round out the cr- the crew, which is, I mean, that's solid. It's a superhero movie. You can get that, right? But then can you, you go? Wait, C. can Riley. you wait, 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 pause? Can you like Bradley yeah, Cooper? Yeah, you does, can get that. Bradley Cooper saying yes to playing a raccoon just blows my mind. He's Vin only Diesel? saying yes because he's playing a raccoon, though. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe I that? forget. Yeah, I, I think forget he, it's him. I just think he only like him and Vin Diesel. They only get them because they can do this shit from their basements. <laughs> like Probably. I don't think Bradley Cooper would sign up for this if he had to spend six six months in wherever studio <laughs> doing this stuff, hanging out with Chris Pratt. No, <laughs> you don't think so. You don't see nah, it don't now. He would uh, though. Chris Pratt right now is a much bigger bo- movie star. But go no, ahead. He's not. No, he's not. Then Bradley Cooper? Not even close. In 2023. Yeah, in 2023. You're insane. Doc, Bradley Cooper Mumbury, did a Star is Born. Mumbury, you're insane. He did a Star is Born. He was hacking next to Dave Chris Chappelle. Pratt can't what do was... a Chris Pratt can't launch a movie that's not a part of a big franchise. He cannot. All right, let's just agree to disagree. Because I, like, 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 <laughs> you're trying to you're, think of a Chris you're... Pratt movie. No, no, that's, he did that bomb I... with Jennifer Lawrence, that fucking passenger. <laughs> that didn't go well. He did the Tomorrow War time thing. That didn't go well. I mean... Okay, so I tell like me him. the tell me the recent Bradley Cooper movies that you enjoy. He has taken a bit of a break. Oh, he 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 go. Has. But he A has. Star Is Born is better, and American Sniper are like two legit hits that literally it the the it's just Bradley Cooper on the cover, and that's it. And he directed A Star Is Born, acted in it, blew up. American Sniper is literally just him, and it made like two hundred million dollars. Dude, American oh. Sniper, like as like a veteran at the end of that movie i cried so hard like my wife was like holding me like what's wrong and i was like oh my god yeah I, he's head and shoulders above i don't need you can't even compare. honestly nightmare alley just got nominated for a best picture last year and he was leading that he was in the mule that made 100 million dollars but that was 2018 so yeah, 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 yeah he has yeah, been yeah. taking a bit of a break you you might have me on this one but i lean so much more on the sale samuel l jackson's point of view in making movies he's here to entertain and if like you ask any hollywood exec right now who do you want in your movie chris pratt or bradley cooper 
I'm going at least 75% no. of them no. is going to say Chris Pratt. Right that's, now, this yeah. dude is on fire. Yes, everything he touches is an IP franchise, whatever the fuck, but it's working. That's and for he's a reason. the star of it. All right. Um, all right. All right. But all right. Let's I'm go sorry through. for cutting you off. Oh, go. Yeah, you're Keep good. You're good. The cast. Yes. So yes. Just, so this is where it gets cool because you have John C. Riley, who is a sick actor. Just awesome. popping in for 10 minutes. Benicio Del Toro, sick actor, popping in for 10 minutes. They they have Glenn Close literally playing Nova Prime for like Wait, five who minutes. Was, who was Jossie Riley? He and, was uh, the corpse man. He was the guy that reads out when they're going to prison first. Yeah. And then he's the oh. guy that he's the guy that they call in yeah. to, and for the attack. I mean, this dude has like a, a Academy nominations and is an amazing actor, and he's there for five minutes. And close literally. And he has a lovely pink family. Right. Yeah. Jermon Hansu. That's my man. No. You better believe. Yeah. You know, Michael Rooker, Lee Pace, Karen Gillian. I mean, it's this is such a sick cast. And everyone just does their little parts and knocks it out of the park. Who who's the actor? Um, oh, you said Del Toro, right? The collector? Yeah, beast. Yeah. Beast. Sicario right. alone. Uh, uh, exactly. On that alone. It's like, why are you in this movie? But he's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. You you gave us the ratings. You told us about the makings and the cast. Anything else, Mulberry? No, I'm, we're ready to dive in. Hugo, you have anything to say before we start going through the movie? Or you no. are as ready? Soon, as soon as you mentioned the cast, I was like, as soon as you kept mentioning more and more names, I was like, oh, yeah, wow. I don't think you could do that, like, as a first movie. Yeah, anymore. crazy. Especially all these people now would be... They would ask for like quadruple the money. Right. A hundred percent. Do you guys think that because they saw like it getting hot on in Marvel that they were like, all right, let's try this. Let, let's jump in. Or were, is it just James Gunn? This is a great script. Let me give it a shot. Or were these actors not who they were today? This was post the first Avengers. So it was really hot. He goes right on that one. And also I think having a director with a great vision, because I think Taika Waititi, if he was doing Thor 5, he could get like a bunch of people to do bit parts and do this kind of stuff. Or even uh, do you Ryan you really Coogler. fucking believe that? Ryan or even Coogler, Ryan yes. Coogler. Taiki I think. Is- Taiko no. Waititi? No. Yeah, Thor 5, after seeing the shit show that Thor 4 was? Thor 4 was rough. Like, Thor 4 was There's rough. There's no way. still got pulled. I Tyke wouldn't get close to the fifth movie with the fucking... Taika still got pulled. All right. We'll I, see. Probably, probably, probably. I, I think it's just Hemsworth just... He just... He, he draws people in, man. Yeah. I hope so. I hope I know, that... but he needs to go to a fucking movie jail for extraction. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> Extraction, the best part of Extraction One was when he they beat up he beat up those street kids <laughs> in India. And that's all I wanted too. <laughs> Bring back those street kids. Let's go a second round. Oh Fuck them kids. God. I don't know. What, I mean, random Eastern think, European bad guys is, is so 2008 taken. You don't <laughs> think beating a, a boy's father in front of him to a pulp with a, like a metal shaft is not, that's not enough for you. You want to see him beat kids. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> You're um, a monster. Well, Barry, take us through this movie. Please, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to skip the sad, uh, the sad mom dying scene because that's not needed but what <laughs> what <laughs> you go you see what i gotta fucking deal with you see all right uh, on rewatch when i first saw the scene i was like wait this is how it opened up yeah you it was forget so it. dark but then he walks out and gets kidnapped by aliens to us and that's i know insane. they have to <laughs> put it in there and i know they have to have that so that when he when it comes back to the end and he's reaching out and he sees his mom, it makes sense. But in my mind, this movie starts with the raid. And it's just like, it's super cool because the character, when you don't know what's going on, he's dressed in a leather jacket. So you think, and he's in space. So you immediately think Han Solo, but he's doing like a raid on a temple. So you're thinking Indiana Jones, <laughs> and, but he's dancing. So it's like a weird vibe. <laughs> they they break in and he's witty and he does the I'm Star Lord. Come on, man. <laughs> and I don't know what a great intro to a character. Mumbury, I love doing these with you. That Indiana Jones Han Solo mix. I didn't think of that, but of course you're right. With him dancing, that is cool. Great. Let's see him dance. Grab these fucking alien monsters and start using it as a mic. 
but this is when the soundtrack begins and this is when you start to flutter when you get the vibe of what this movie is going to be when the music right. kicks in and this is your protagonist that you're watching right. singing and acting silly it's just it's just it a great cool. start Yeah. It's cool. And they really, I mean, I, it's, it's kind of weird because Han Solo is such an iconic scoundrel, space scoundrel with the gun guy that like he kind of takes everyone. Because when you're watching this the first time and he like betrays betrays his partners and takes the, the treasure for himself. And you're like, yo, this is just, we're just <laughs> doing the hits right here. <laughs> when you're watching it the first time and every time you think about it, you think about who else probably auditioned for this movie. Is it true that you were almost Star-Lord in Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah, humble pie, true. whatever, I, I'd brag all day about that. It, just, yeah, it feels weird, because when the movie came out, uh, yeah. James Gunn did some interview and somebody, uh, I guess he said that I was his second choice in the interview, but no one ever told me. And then you think about, oh, they could have gotten like way bigger stars, you know, Joseph Gordon-Levitt or whatever. But then when you see Chris Pratt dancing, across the space thing and he's really getting into it and then you can kind of see that from his parks and rec character tell me if this is appropriate for a kid's song i changed the lyrics in sex hair to yeah i got sex bears and you you can see why they picked him yeah he kind of has a movie that like star. carefree yeah like a yeah. movie star something like bradley cooper or better you know who knows <laughs> He's got a lot of charm to him, for sure. Yeah. It's fantastic. That's the perfect word for, for Chris Pratt. He's got charm, and that's, like... And he's self-deprecating, too. Yeah, it's just, yeah. he is the perfect Star-Lord. And, like, that that last thing he says, like, I'm Star-Lord, come on. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, I like that, because as soon as he went, who? I was like, in my mind, I was like, yeah, who the hell is star Exactly. Right. I never heard of him. Right. And then it immediately... They answer it. Jamon Hantu's character is great. They intro that real quick. How do you guys feel about how little the bad guy is in this? What do you mean by um, how little? Ronan? What do you mean by that? Ronan the accuser. Oh, He's, I, I mean, he is a B side character almost the entire movie. He is doing his own thing. He's got his own bills to pay. <laughs> they kind of split the character in half, and Jamon Hantu's Korath does. <laughs> like half of it, Nebula does the other half, and then yeah. it's kind of just like cutting back to Ronan at, at, at home base, <laughs> checking in with Thanos for half the movie until he shows up. But yeah. I honestly think it, he's acted really well, though. Lee Pace kills it. I really do think, like, yes, out of all the bad guys, Marvel's not the greatest with bad guys outside of Thanos, but as a bad guy, yeah, he might not have the best showing or, like, the most awesome, like, storyline. But that first intro to him, when he bashes the dude's brain, yeah. that's an intimidating intro. I don't know if that happens between the intro, uh, um, the raid, and then the Xandar, but that is a great intro to a bad guy. And yeah. he's like watching his blood juice dripple all over his ship. It's like something's, this dude's fucked up. And I'm, I, yeah. I'd am i love to see where this goes. It, it honestly might be because I, I don't think that character has a lot of depth to him. Of course I not. think he just really, really hates the Kree. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he's just like a, I think they just call him a fanatic. Yeah. And yeah. so maybe he's not, he's really just not that deep of a character. And they were just like, let's just keep him off to yeah. the side. But who but, did you ever read any of the comics? Do you know anything more about this than yeah? Just movies know. and occasionally I'll get on like comics explained on YouTube or something and I'll deep dive for a little bit, but it's only after I see the movie and I'm like, I want to know more about the character. And no one has ever once said that about Ronan. Yeah. Go Never ahead. said that about literally any character in this Guardians of the Galaxy universe. At first, I was like, I could care less about these guys. It's, it's like the Sea Squad. Like, <laughs> not powerful, just... Except for Groot. Groot's OP. Although I do like when a bad guy has a name, like, because his name, full name is Ronan the Accuser. The whole yeah, time cool. you see you're waiting for him to be like, yo, why is he the accuser? <laughs> and then when he yells at the fucking planet, you stand accused. I'm like, all right, cool. All right, cool. Like, I'm getting with a babe. That's right. That's um, right. You stand accused. Your wretched peace treaty will not save you now. Tis the tinder on which you 
That's right. So the next big scene is a Xandar scene. So that's Quill's trying to sell his little trinket that he stole. He has no clue what it is. Gamora there waiting for him. Not slick at all. None. Like, shoot. <laughs> she was. <laughs> so her pitch to, <laughs> to him, to Ronan, yeah. was like, oh. I know it. You need to send me. I know the planet. I know the area. She literally just waits and then grabs it and runs. Like, anyone could. <laughs> It's kind of it sets off a little chase scene between her, Peter Quill, and then Rocket and Groot, and uh, they all get nabbed. So that's kind of like a great intro for everyone, and you kind of see how the team gets together. Pretty, all the little, pretty, all, all the little things about this the scene is great. Like even watching it back now, and like I hate to keep going back to Ant Man, but that's like the biggest like world building movie that we've seen in Marvel recently. And just like Xandar, wait, wait the, which the, one? Ant Man, this new one that just came out. <laughs> It's a world building movie. Well, I'm saying you're in a different <laughs> world. Like you're in the quantum oh, realm or whatever. Oh, but I'm okay. saying this planet, it looks legit. Like the planet yeah. looks legit. The dude that they're selling the things to looks amazing. Like the, the time and effort, the costumes, the yeah. design, everything in this movie looks so beautiful. Like the plant, like I want to visit Xandar. I love this, this, this fucking planet that almost got blown up by the accuser. So I thought that was fantastic. And just the the back and forth between Groot and Rocket and him mm-hmm. making fun of the folks and the Stan Lee cameo. You always have to have that. That was yep. really fun to see. It was good. It was really, really, really good. That arrest scene goes right into John C. Riley doing the readout in front of Nova Corps. And I'd like to point this out because I feel like a lot of movies could learn from this because I just watched the, uh, I, I, was it Transformers or Indiana Jones or something? But a lot of the movie was in the trailer. Oh, and Flash too. I just watched Flash. Oh. And Flash had so many like suspenseful moments at the end of the movie that were in the main trailer. <laughs> and this movie, yeah. if I remember the trailer for this movie, it was the Star-Lord who part was in yep. it. And then the the rap sheet readout, which is what John C. Riley does. And you got to see like everyone like this dude. And then Peter Quill does the middle finger rolling out. Thing. Exactly. I mean, I keep the trailer parts in the beginning. Don't yeah. show me stuff. That's but this movie does a great the, job. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. This next part might be my favorite. Okay. Because so, this is essentially a heist movie where they steal it in the first two seconds. It's like if Ocean's Eleven started from them stealing it, getting caught, and then having this to, to work their way back yep. out of the problem. Them getting the crew together at the kiln, in the prison, working how they get Drax in there, making promises. You get to see who, what type of people they all are is my favorite part of the movie, the breakout scene. Yes. And you get to see what everyone's good at. Uh, Peter Quill is not much. <laughs> but you get to see what everyone's good at it's the it's a team up it's a team up scene it's, and like you said the production quality of this movie is amazing it feels like a prison in space yeah it really really is and you really do believe all of them and when you say that peter quill is not much because yeah you they do let things shine in this in this big breakout prison breakout scene but one of my favorite things is everyone has a job to do, like except for Drax, who's just pummeling folks. But um, <laughs> Peter, every, everyone gets their job done in this like fantastical way. And Peter's over here. He's like, I had to pay for the leg. And yeah. it was like the least. <laughs> you need my what? Go ahead. He's, yeah, he's the empathetic one in the group. Yeah. So he's the one that gets everyone together. <laughs> you Early in the movie, they, there's just a, a small scene where, have you guys all seen Guardians 3? Yes. Yeah. Uh, There's a small scene where they cut to Peter noticing Rocket's back, and it just yes. lingers on that for a bit. And you're like, "Oh, Peter's like thinking more like, about thinking yes. about it." Honestly, all the Rocket stuff it comes up later in the movie too when Rocket gets drunk. When you watch three, and then you watch this movie back again, you're like, "Holy shit!" They've been laying this foundation down for such a long time, and it, I don't know about you guys, but it really paid off, at least for me watching three watching rocket story evolve and i'm glad that they they lay the tracks down early and, and they do it so fucking one. well so well like it's like the vision that james gunn must have had from the from one all the way through three had to have been like seamless because you notice it every single step of the way every yeah. single step of the way and it's beautiful right from the get like like you yep. said the first time he has his shirt off it's that exact marking it's that exact marking but he doesn't look at it the same way he does in the third movie in the third movie it's more like 
like that's my family like what happened and it's just it, it's cool that yeah. you see the same scene almost but in two different ways it's beautiful yeah. no you're yeah. right a hundred percent and that's like if you do like these group of people and you were to re-watch one after watching three like your heart opens up so much more for the entire volume three but just a few more just highlights about this prison break number one all of this emotional shit with Rocket, yeah, it's all there. But Rocket is a fucking genius. Yeah, he's, he's the MVP fucking, of this scene. Yeah, bro. He's a fucking genius. This Rocket, like the idea of getting out, out of that prison with all of that tinkering and all of that stuff. First of all, phenomenal. One of my favorite things that they do every time there's Rocket and, and Groot, when Rocket is on Groot's back and he gets the gun and he starts screaming and just blasting folks, <laughs> I love that. I love it's just like the joy that Rocket has is just killing folks. Yeah, and, just, and that's another trailer point yes. moment when yes. Drax throws him the yeah. gun. He goes like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah." It's it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And for the next like three movies, anytime you see Rocket, he's always like, "Oh, I'll get that gun, or I'll get that arm," or he's always like, he's just always stealing stuff because he's had to. And I know you don't see that till later on. Yeah. But it's fun to see all his character traits actually play out throughout like three yeah. movies. The leg gag is amazing. <laughs> it's <Yeah>. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes back a couple of times. One yeah. more Doesn't thing. He one steal more. an eyeball? He asks, yeah. for, he asks yeah. for it. He asks for it. Oh, uh, um, okay, okay. Oh, wait, what did I want to tell you? Oh, Mabari uh, and Hugo. What do you? I feel as though Rocket is a little mean. He's a little mean to Groot. I don't like how mean he is to Groot. Do you guys think he was a little mean? I know that he pulled the box out before it was time to pull the box out. and But I just don't like the way Rocket talks to Groot like that all the time. Or am I being a little sensitive? I think Groot uh, might be more annoying than we think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we don't know what he's saying at all times, you know? I guess, but, I guess. I don't know. And Groot's a little dumb. Like, he's okay. probably, we don't know, like... I don't know, but Rocket is a little mean. Also, I gotta say, the other surprising thing is Dave Bautista in this movie. Mm. Oh, yeah. Is like, stealth, talk about his like, intro. Yeah, go ahead. Stealth, one of the funniest, because he's so serious, but, but they do a thing where they play it so serious that it's played for jokes. <laughs> and but you can still he still has a serious moment and he still cares about revenge and his family. But then when they do those gags where it's like, yo, know, metaphors go over his head <laughs> and it's like my reflexes are too fast yeah. Yeah. nothing <laughs> goes over my head that kind of stuff is so good the writing in this is amazing and dave bautista does such good deadpan leave us where this hurts we can find it yeah i'll have to agree with the walking thesaurus on that one do not ever call me a thesaurus they go to nowhere that's the next big scene yeah the collector Benicio Del Toro is on smoke in this he's movie. On fire, bro. He's doing this. He does this weird thing when he gets the thing where he's like. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And you're like, what is going on? It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, this is when you get the exposition dump of the old X Xfinity Stones. This is, is this where you hear it for the first time in the MCU? I think so. I think so. Explained and, in this detail, yes. And, yeah. the, they, and, they've shown up before, but explained in like, this, these were the stones before the universe was made. Explanation, yes. This is what's crazy is they set this up here and then it's literally like eight movies later is when it pays off. <laughs> so this is when Marvel was really feeling themselves because they, because now I'm like, I'm like, yo, know, Quantum realm, whatever those dudes are, I'm like, I'm, out. I'm already I'm out. out. It's been <laughs> you have that like little one-on-one -on -one scene with Peter and Zoe Zaldana that kind of establishes their their romance for a bit, and then Ronan, you got Ronan calling in, called in by Drax. Oh uh, yeah, insane. Where, the insane. first time you look at that, you're like, what is going on? But now you kind of get it. Yeah. From, yeah. from Drax's perspective, it's like, you know, you're just fucking trying to get money. I don't give a shit about any of that. I'm I'm here to take down Ronan. <laughs> Lee Pace plays that so well. He's like, dude, I have no idea who you are. Yeah. Like, Thanks. <laughs> nice, nice to meet you. I've killed thousands. And when he turns away from him, he's like, yo, all right, we get to go. <laughs> <laughs> the embarrassment. A million things. I know you just said, yeah, they had their little moment. I thought that moment was sweet. Like, you have to think at this point in Marvel, like, what was the biggest love story prior to this? This is the first Marvel relationship that I actually believed and Pepper wanted. Pepper Potts to and Iron Man? 
and Tony Stark. Come on. I, I Like I'm saying that I wanted to see more of. I think at Pepper Potts and Iron Man, yes, it makes sense. I don't mind it. It's not like I'm against it. But this is the first relationship I actually like. That I'm actually like, they're sweet together. I see them build together. I see them come together. It's what I'm saying. Is, this is my favorite relationship by this point, And I think still to this point, number one. But number two, when you were saying Del Toro, the collector was on fire. Bro, the brutality. He, he's talking to one of his workers and he's like, points to the fucking, like, jail cell and he's like you see what i happen <laughs> you see what will happen if you don't put your nah, elbow but honestly, it's i kind of get where he's coming from because that amazing. shit was filthy if you looked closely if you paused it that thing was she was i was like what was she doing that whole time i mean you could at least you scrub it a little bit when he walks by you pretend you're doing some work you don't have slaves around when you're opening <laughs> power stones and infinity stones it just seems like a bad bad idea it really, really is a bad idea. And before, I think this is after the explosion. Um, I don't know if you wanted to talk about this, but then you get another one of those emotional rocket scenes that I absolutely love when they when they do get drunk. Oh, no, this is before. This is before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That emotional rocket scene where he's like, I'm not a fucking rat, right? And he's like, and he's like, no one thinks of you as a rat. And he's like, yes, yes, you guys do. She called me vermin. He called me a rodent. Like, I'm about to fucking blast yeah. your brains open. <laughs> and I'm like, you feel that. Well, I didn't ask to get made. I didn't ask to be torn apart and put back together over and over and turned into some, some little monster. Especially yeah. after watching volume three, you feel it so much. It, it's like, it's such a good moment for Rocket. It's such a good moment. And he's like, once I get this, I'm still going to fucking kill you. And I'm like, yeah. you, you should. <laughs> you should. In terms of set piece battles and space battles it's all right this isn't my my favorite part of the movie being chased in a pod around is just it's like for me it's like it's just all okay it's not not yeah. top gun I yeah hear it. they just run <laughs> the sacrifice that's where this is where you see what what peter's made of and, yes. and what he brings to the table because yes. he's the only one in the guardians that's why he's kind of the glue because he's the only one in the guardians that would sacrifice himself well at this stage at I think stage. I think later on they become way more of a tight knit family, but but at this stage he's the only one that would sacrifice himself for another team member, and he does in a big way, in a big yeah. way. And I know, look, listen, I know, I know, I just said this is the relationship I like the most. The reason I like Peter Quill for doing this so much more is because honestly, I wouldn't have. Like, I just met this chick. She tried yeah. to kill me for the first thirty minutes we knew each other. Like, I'm not gonna risk my life. But then he calls Yondu. They get zapped up. Uh, it's You have to give it up. Like, hats off. Good for you, bro. Good for you. And Yondu's amazing, too. Yeah. What a good Another character. character. I knew nothing about and hated at first and then loved so quickly. Like, I don't, I don't understand how Marvel does that. Yeah, dude. Yondu, I hated at first. That's just like, yeah, I don't know. I was a B character. He just abducted a kid immediately. Like, halfway through the movie, you start realizing, like, oh, he's not bad. And, oh, and he's then, amazing. Yeah. Got any other cute little buggers like this? And I like to stick them all in a roll on my control console. I can't tell if you're joking or not. He's being fully serious. When he, I love Brooker. <laughs> yeah. I think of the only other place I've seen him is Cliffhanger with Sly Stallone. In the, uh, now it's the early 90s. But I quote, me and my brother quote Yondu all the time. Because <laughs> when Yondu walks up and he's like, is that what they fill in your head with, boy? <laughs> Cinnamon. <laughs> like, oh my god! Slaps the shit out of him, bro. He slaps the shit Cinnamon. out of him. Is that what you've been filling your head with, boy? Cinnamon. <laughs> and then you kind of get because you 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 like yo Peter is such a softy. Like, how is he a thief, raider, all this shit? And it's like, oh, he grew up with these guys. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then Yondu, you can tell Yondu loves him. <laughs> because everyone else was like, yo, we got to let's go kill Peter. And and all Peter has to say is, what do you think, Yondu? One more score? <laughs> and that's all he has to say. And then he's like, 360, he's like, let's go. No, but that just, just, just to like cherry on top of what both of you guys are saying, because he gets zapped up and he does the whole thing. Like, I have to kill you. No one believes Sean is actually going to kill Peter, but like he has to do it for all of his boys to see. And it does, he does play it off pretty well. Scared because you're soft in here, here, right here. Right. He does slap the shit out of him with saying when this broad is filling you with all that sentiment. What? Afterwards, like after um, Peter is just like, 
it is going to be worth four billion units or whatever their their the currency is. And he's like, yeah, all right, we're back at it. And he yeah. goes from I'm, I'm going, going to kill you to us being best friends in a second, and you believe it, and it's just it's just so good. It's Not just, just so best good. friends. We could we're gonna sacrifice our entire fleet. Yep. to fight <laughs> Ronan the Accuser with this the stone. The first right? time you see his arrow, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. First yeah. time in use. First time in yeah. use. He, he I remember threatens. thinking, like, "Whoa!" Like, like, what if you can't whistle? Like, that's, that's... <laughs> that kind of goes right into this. It's that they have their little powwow. Like we keep talking about the trailer. This is the last trailer part, right? They do the joke about like twelve percent. That's barely a plan. And she's like, that's a concept. And he's laughing and that's a fake laugh. Oh, it's real. They do that whole thing. And then they do the walk slow-mo to, I think it's Cherry Bomb. Yep. And that's like the trailer. Like the trailer exactly. literally ends with them walking in slow-mo to, to Cherry Bomb. But but this that's the formation of Guardians of the Galaxy. They're like, when they all decide like, all right, no one's going to save the the galaxy we're gonna have we to do are it. to do it yep um, but just just to let you know that entire scene when they're together like a lot of the, the like the jokes and like those kind of funny scenes throughout marvel is really forced and there's like like instances in that entire roundup that do seem a little forced but i really do love that scene right he asks the question he's like gamora's like you're asking us to die and then she's like i am i'd much i've been like surrounded by enemies my entire life i would be honor to die uh, amongst friends it's just it really is a beautiful sentiment that a yondu is not a fan of but my favorite line when everyone else is standing after Groot stands when um rocket's like well now i'm standing happy we're all standing now a <laughs> bunch of jackasses standing in yeah. a circle now i'm standing y'all happy we're all standing up now bunch of jackasses it's beautiful yeah. it's it's hilarious so then I, I got the final assault. Great ship design. You, you mean know, Ron, Ronan's or your Ronan's ship? Yeah. Because here's the thing. I'll, uh, you watch enough of these sci-fi movies. There's like three ship designs, right? They're all like long and they got like a top piece and it, it, they all look the same. This ship actually looks very unique. It kind of does this spinning thing. Um, he's like, it's almost like a hammerhead shark's head. They do this aerial battle above Xandar. Which is cool, little space space action. Yeah, I mean it's it's Marvel's final third, exactly. final set pieces things. Yeah. Is, there, it's honestly it's it's tough. Okay, what is it? What's your best ending for a Marvel movie? Because most of them, you, like you not counting the Avengers, obviously, right? Because Endgame and Infinity, like Infinity those are, War, is probably it. Yeah, but a lot of them just end up being CGI set. shit fests. Shit fest. Yeah. And some of them get really, really, really bad. I think the worst one I've ever seen is Black Widow. Black Widow's was really bad. <laughs> Quantum Mania's was pretty bad. I thought but Black Panther's was pretty shitty as well. Black Panther's was bad. And that was an amazing movie. Exactly. It was like, it was pretty shitty as well. Before we just talk about the deets of the this ending, and I don't even think we need to talk much about it because we just kind of, it's a recipe. You just plug yeah. in the fucking um, yeah. uh, characters of each movie. Can we talk about seeing Thanos now? After knowing what happens, tell me he's not a fucking great bad guy. Even from this cameo that he has for two minutes when he's cussing out Ronan, right? Like, I I think that happened a couple of times prior. But when he looks at Ronan, he's like, your your attitude is like a petulant child. It amuses me. Get the nah. fuck out. Tell me that isn't, like, I love that. Thanos it makes me that. like Ronan more. How? Because Ronan knows how strong Thanos is. And he's like... Nah, you know what? I'm not taking it anywhere. <laughs> I'm taking this shit for myself. And and knowing how strong Thanos is, everyone knows. Everyone's like, yo, that's Thanos, that's Thanos. Ronan legit goes, I'm handling these people, then I'm coming for you. <laughs> yes. Right? And he says that to his face. And hangs up on him. And hangs yeah, up and on the motherfucker. Yeah. And also, so I also got to wonder. How lazy is Thanos? Because oh we saw that when he really wants to get these stones, <laughs> you can get them in about one movie, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he didn't have to send Loki for the first Avenger. I he mean, he's so like much. out here laying down like, oh, we got to help Loki. I'm going to open up a wormhole and send some Chitari to help Loki in New York. Then I'm going I'm to I'm send my two daughters to help. He could have literally just gone down there and been like, all right, yo. I'm taking this power stone from the collector. 
I'm going over. I mean, what are we doing? I know. I know. But listen, let the fucking story play out. I loved it. I loved it. I, I could get it if if he was like in some palace, you know, getting back rubs and being like, <laughs> I'm not going to get up. I'm having a great time. He's at the edge of the world. on like some stone thing. Yeah. He's looking at the galaxy. He's literally not doing anything else. That's what he does, bro. He, his castle is the debris of a planet that he destroyed. It's but it's amazing. It's a cool sequence here where you kind of get to see everyone. Like, you know, everyone like levels up. And so Peter's doing the guns and they're kind of working together. And, and Groot's putting the branches and Drax throwing them around. And they're kind of all working together. It's cool. It's just you guys have both seen Guardians 3. Yeah. And that action scene. Yeah, in that hallway is like yeah. yeah. All right, exactly. Someone watch John. Wick. Someone watch John Wick a little bit. <laughs> yeah. to level up. For the time, it was it really was good. A couple of the moments in throughout um, that final battle that I thought was cool when um, the Xandar Xandarians, whatever you want to call it, do the starship and hold it back with this like magnetic net or whatever they do. I thought that looked pretty cool. I absolutely loved when the ship was falling. Groot says we are Groot and he's uh, yeah. the light. It's beautiful. It's just another yeah. fucking beautiful scene. We are Groot. Can we talk about the dancing? Oh, well, wait. Uh, you, question. Because yeah. they said Groot. Because Groot technically dies, right? I, I know he, he comes back as like a plant. Eventually he kind of reanimates eventually. Is he the same group? I think so. I, or is I hope so. I don't know how the life form of the Groots are, but I I think it's like the essence of Groot just because like honestly the Groot in volume three versus the Groot pre exploding in volume one is a lot smarter and the Groot in volume yeah. one looks seems a lot older than the Groot in volume three I think he did right. kind of get an upgrade after his you know demise because Groot in volume one is legitimately a dummy like eating yeah. his own shoulder grass it's <laughs> he's, he's a dummy dummy he says three words yeah, yeah, yeah. and this is the fourth the first time you ever hear him say a fourth <laughs> word and it's it's nice it's beautiful this ending this last ending this last little piece I think this is what separates like this is what makes it a 92 percent MCU Marvel movie versus the generic ass you know, Thor, Love and Thunder, all these movies kind of have this thing where the, the hero's got to do a little journey of their own and they got to build something or learn something or something's got to change in them. Well, this movie, act, they actually earn it. There's all these scenes where you see him working together, moving through stuff so that when you see him go like, ooh, child, and he's singing it and, and he's fucking breakdancing and doing that <laughs> stuff. And he's like, oh, I'm distracting you, dummy. <laughs> and you see, like, Rocket. We have already, we already know Rocket can build shit. Instantaneously. Pressure. Yep. And and they launch it, and Peter grabs it, and they all hold hands to think, well, we know. They all know Peter would sacrifice for himself, for him, them. So when we see them all grab and hold on to, it's like, yo, earned, love a- it. Every single, yes. Every single, everything at the end there was earned. Everything was yeah. at the end there was earned. The first time I watched this movie, I really thought, holy shit, this is the silliest thing in the world. But like re-watching it and understanding and seeing all of the connected pieces come together, I was like, that's beautiful. And I, and I and I did really, really enjoy it. I do still think it's a little silly. That's what he was doing. He was just distracting him. Even though, like like you said from the beginning, Mumbari, the Ronin speech to the Xandar planet was kind of i liked it it was kind of yeah. dope it was a kind of yeah. dope this scene. is a man on a mission he knows what he wants yeah he wants all y'all dead he's not <laughs> here to, to play you know, game. Make threats or demands or nothing no y'all were dead when he showed up and he's just he's taking care of this so we can go kick thanos ass and make exactly. sure exactly you got bigger fish to fry right. but yeah I, I thought it was earned and i did like it i did like it quite a bit the end credits amazing credits real good vibe when you're walking out there's the mm-hmm. little stamp Right on the end for you know, the soundtrack, you leave this movie and you're like, damn, I got to get that soundtrack because yep. it's like, yeah, 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 that's I think that's a movie and it's it's really, really solid. And, and like the Marvel does after credits, the best. Well, they're kind of almost the only ones that do Marvel or after credits and 
seeing Cosmo the dog, who I didn't know was a female dog until Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I also I always remember being like, why do they keep showing this space dog? Right. Like it never pays off until like what if? And that's and I was like, oh, that's what they did that for. But then they bring it back in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Oh, and then the duck, Howard. You see him and I think that's Howard the Duck, right? Yeah, that's Howard yeah. the Duck. Yep. And but he's just like sitting there, like kind of useless, and he still hasn't really paid off, right? Do we see him? No. Ever? Hopefully, he, he never he, will, because I don't did. think I got a duck. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> I pray to God there's no duck fucking movie. No one laughs at a master of quack foo. <laughs> Where did um, I see Howard? I he think was. He, he was in Endgame. Some... He was in Endgame. Oh. Yeah, he, he was in Endgame. When, like, when they did the team up, like, to your left, then everyone from all of Marvel showed up. Yeah, like, if you, like, if you, like, pay attention, he was in Endgame. But I don't know where else he was. But I, I do know he was in another movie as well. Uh, and, like, that final, final scene where he puts in the t- the tape player where his mom's gifts and opens it up and the new music starts. You're right. It's It's a beautiful way to start the credits. And it's a beautiful song to start the new credits with. Do you guys, just real quick, do you guys have a favorite scene and a least favorite scene? I'll start with you, Hugo. Favorite scene, uh, it's pro- literally just Rocket. A- anything Rocket, I'm a sucker for Rocket, man. I- anytime I see like a Rocket mashup now or like an edit, where they play like good music, a lot of Rocket scenes, I'm always about it. But I, I think him stealing the leg and-, and, put- and not needing it, like it's just fun for him. That was like, I was like, that's, that's that's me. Like that, that's how I relate to him. I like the 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 prison scene. I like it a lot. I think everyone has their their moments in that scene, and you get to see it's a big rocket scene too. You get to see kind of the genius of him, and then they do that classic thing of of the heist movie where they explain the heist, and then you're gonna <laughs> and then you're gonna go watch the heist happen, and this is just what you're gonna think is happening. But then in the background of him <laughs> explaining the scene, Groot just starts fucking doing the heist. Yeah, I like that. There wasn't like a, a 24, like, well, you know, we'll meet again tomorrow. It was just starts immediately. They explain it as they're explaining. They're like, we're moving on. It, it was fantastic. And uh, you guys, yeah, stole it 100%. It's also my favorite scene. Fantastic scene. The first time you see all of them together, because that's the first time you actually meet Drax. And I don't know if you guys had a worse uh, scene, but for me, I-, I hate to say it, she doesn't really become a part of the team till two, and she's really not that important until like much later. But Nebula was just kind of a bummer. I'm going to step on my LVP. She is my LVP for the movie. And that Nebula Gamora fight, ah, I just, I, it wasn't there for me. It wasn't there for me. I, I-, I could not, I wasn't a fan. I wasn't a fan. Yeah, I just they're both not very charismatic. But um <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Solid, solid, solid. movie. Solid movie. What's um, your favorite um MCU movie? Sort of. Do you want to just fa- do a quick top five? Do you got one off the top, off the dome? Yeah, that's really hard because like for me, it definitely is infinity. Um it, it was probably it would probably be like infinity, then like I think Endgame. everyone has the, about the same. Endgame's not in my top five, but I think wait for real. No, it's not. So then everyone doesn't have it the same. That's insane. That it's not. It's insane that it's not in your top five. It really is. You have you re? This is a fucking sad movie for half the movie. Have you really rewatched it, Endgame? But you the know first me. Half of the I'm like all Tony about Stark's the feel. Like also, the know. last time you see Thor as like, like a fucking man. Like I hate to say it because now he's just a fucking goofball. That scene where Thor cuts the uh, Thanos's head is so like cathartic and great. I love that scene, but. For me, the top five would probably be like Infinity War, Endgame, Black Panther's in there. One of the Spider-Mans is in there. Is it the one, not the one where they go to Rome or Italy or whatever. No Way Home is probably in there. And then, I don't know. No, I don't know. No Way I, Home is like nostalgic paradise. Just yeah, it's just, if, if that's what you want, then it's yeah. there for you. Um, especially for like the millennial classic folks, you're all watching this. Like No Way Home is a movie made for us. But I don't know. I'd have to like really sit down and think about it because there's a lot. Just on this rewatch, I want to throw Guardians in there just because it my was so Guardians good. is in there for me. Yeah, like, and that's I, what I'm saying. Black Panther's in there. Infinity War's in there. Winter Soldier is probably number one, and then Infinity War is my like one of my favorite stand. I know it's not standalone movies, but you can watch it and from start to beginning, it's like 
it's almost like a movie you've never seen just because like the bad guy wins. Yeah. And it's, I don't know. I remember leaving that feeling when I left the theater, everyone left the theater feeling like, what the hell? Like I I've never felt that outside of, in a superhero movie. Uh, Endgame was, it was, it was fun, but I didn't have the same feeling. It was, I don't know. I, don't, I liked it. But I, I would say for one, it's definitely infinity war. Uh, I don't know about the rest. Oh, yeah. not a it's, it's a hard question. I mean, it's like, what, 25, 30 movies at this point? It's not an easy question. Like, you, you, you sit down with it. Ladies and gentlemen, so that is our review. Our Wait, review. who's the MVP? Who you got for the MVP? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, for me, my MVP is Rocket. It's, for me, it's not even close. Yeah, it might. Yeah, it might have to be Rocket for me, too. He's just, he kills it all the time. Anytime he's on screen, Rocket's, like, they're animating him. To steal the show, man. Gamora was meh. I don't know. She just. But with that being said, like when they killed her off later, I was so sad about that too. I disagree with the both of you guys. Like I was saying that Nebula is boring as shit, but I like Gamora. I did. I liked her quite a bit. She came in hard nosed. She got the feels for Chris Pratt. And then they ended up working together. I don't think she had like the greatest arc. I don't think she's like the best. Um, I don't know where I'd line her up in my favorite of the Guardians, but I don't think she's shit. I, I would give Nebula most approved over the, oh, yeah. over the oh Nebula, yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Of course. Like at first I was like, okay, I'm tired of her. Like we can kind of get rid of her. And now I'm like, she's quintessential part of the team. Yeah. But you have to watch three to have that be yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have anything different for your MVP or LVP, Barry? I have a James Gunn. Oh. I think James Gunn's the MVP for this. And great call. He take what he does from this franchise, kills it, does too, gets canceled and fired. So he gets to leave his Disney contract. He goes over to Warner Brothers, does Suicide Squad with Idris Elba, and it's a solid movie. It's uh, it's way better than the the, the first one, and then. Kills it so much that Warner Brothers is like, yo, you're in charge of Warner Brothers comics. You're in charge of DC. And then Disney's like, yo, we still need you over here to finish out Guardians 3. And he makes the best the best movie. In- since Endgame. Since Endgame. Well, literally just far. No, well, yeah. whole, well, like the Spider-Man movie is different. Yeah, it's up there. No, but no, it's better than the Spider-Man movies. Yeah, you're right. Because the nostalgia bait is like heavy in the Spider-Man. But like. Yeah. Like for an MCU, MCU movie, you're mm-hmm. right. It's probably the best one. I agree. And that's a really great call. And like James Gunn, it's not like you have like a fucking John Williams or Hans Zimmer. He's just picking the soundtrack to this movie as well. And it's fucking yeah. fantastic. Also, uh, James Gunn's brother, I think, uh, Craig. Sean Gunn? Oh, Sean right. Gunn, yeah. yeah. The other gun. Like that guy, um, his guttural scream. I know this is in the second movie when the. Yeah, and dude, the Ravagers show up to do all the fireworks in space, and he screams like, "Yes!" One of the most like emotional moments. Just, just rewatch that. Yeah, no, this. that no, no, no. You're right because that that part had me in the feels. It's, yeah, They're yeah, really I, good. I'm that, thinking about it right now. Like, fuck. No, Yondu's <laughs> death scene. Yeah, is honestly, really earned. And you got you kind of get the he. I mean, they were pushing the whole he's the real father figure for Peter the whole time, but it's really, it really is earned yeah. in it. That's one of the the best death scenes in, in Marvel. Like some, a lot of people die, and I'm just like, yeah, whatever. When Yandu died, for someone who's kind of a bad guy, it, it's like, and I remember being like, and then being like, by the end of the movie, I'm like, am I gonna cry for this guy? Damn it. Yeah, but it's earned, and yeah, yeah. it truly, truly is. Thanks for having me on. This is which is fun. Well, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. Who, uh, Hugo, why don't you tell the folks where they can find you? Yeah, just YouTube, Life Almost Without Us. There's plenty of reactions. I'm surrounded by my wife and my attractive friend, so it helps me get views. And I'm just there to hit the comedy. People, <laughs> man, people yell at me in the comments all the time. Man, sure, go do stand-up somewhere else. I'm like, no. <laughs> It's your channel. No, I'm what doing it here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to entertain. What do you want from me? I love it. Um, all, all the links are going to be in the comment section down below. You guys, uh, you have two questions to answer for this. Number one, your favorite, uh, your favorite Guardians movie, and then number two, uh, what was the other? Se- Let's just keep it at your favorite Guardians. 
out of the three Guardians movies, which one was your, was your favorite? Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll catch you on the um, next week. Deuces. Bye, y'all. Deuces.